quirky, and the fact that they look like the love child of a duck and beaver makes the platypus a truly fascinating creature. Surprisingly, its appearance isn't the selling feature of what makes it so unusual. Are you for real? This oddball mammal can produce venom capable of killing small animals. This same venom could be used to help treat a disease in humans. I like the sound of that. Can you guess which disease platypus venom is used for? How does this differ from other treatments? Could platypus milk be another medical marvel? Let's take a dip with this little weirdo and see if we can save the day. Platypuses can be found hiding out in rivers and streams across eastern Australia. When scientists first saw sketches of the platypus, they thought they were being pranked. Is this a joke? Some even went as far as to check for stitches, thinking someone had sewn a beak on another animal. To find its food, it uses its bill. It's covered in electroreceptors that track its prey's electrical activity like muscle contractions and heart signals. A platypus bill has around 40,000 of these receptors. Considering it spends half the day trying to eat 20% of its body weight, it's a strong asset to have. Their strange traits continue if you look a little closer. Male platypuses have spurs on their hind feet that can release venom. Now you might be thinking that they use this venom to hunt prey or as a defense mechanism against predators. It's strong enough to do that, but this is not the case. Males release it when they want to mate with female platypuses and scare away other competing males. Ah, the things we do for love. I'm pretty sure that's not love. Platypuses release an important hormone called glucagon-like peptide 1, or GLP-1, in both their gut and venom that regulates blood sugar by stimulating insulin production. Humans also release this in their gut, but it degrades in a matter of minutes. The short time that this hormone works is not enough to keep their blood sugar levels balanced since not enough insulin is produced. The GLP-1 hormone in platypuses has developed a resistance to the usual degradation, resulting in it staying in your system longer and making it ideal for diabetes treatment. No need to worry though, we don't need platypuses on tap to extract this hormone, thank goodness. We can produce the stable form of GLP-1 in laboratories. Further research of platypus venom could go a long way in diabetes treatment. Adding to a plethora of bizarre attributes, the female platypus doesn't have nipples. So they will sweat milk onto its lap so these little critters can feed on it. I have nipples, Greg. Could you milk me? This milk has the potential to be one of the most important substances to humankind. So what makes it so special? Its lactation protein is a unique shape, curly. Out of 100,000 protein structures that have been studied to date, the platypus is the only one with curly proteins. Impressive. And these curls kill off bacteria. Researchers believe the milk might have evolved this way because it stays out in the open, making it more vulnerable to bugs and bacteria. This is a big deal, considering the World Health Organization states that antibiotic resistance is one of the biggest threats to global health, food security, and development. So if platypuses can help us develop new or more effective antibiotics, we could be saved from a world where a simple infection could kill you. I never thought I'd say this, but I'm so thankful platypuses don't have nipples. Platypuses aren't the only animal helping us develop treatments. Check out our episode on horseshoe crabs and how they could be the key to COVID-19 vaccines. Helping treat diabetes with their venom and creating antibiotics with their milk is what platypuses do. And that's what makes them crazy creatures.